Hey there folks, this is uh, Victor Garzik uh, coming at you one more time with my EVH Wolfgang in black, matte black with a an ebony fretboard, fingerboard, maple neck in the back, made in Mexico. It's kind of fuzzy, blurry, but you can probably make it out. Um, and I'm going through my EVH uh, amplifier, uh, Lunchbox 2, concentric volume and gain. I, I have to say it because I love that feature. I've been wanting it since it came out and I had to wait a long time, but I finally got it. Uh, I also have the 50 watt version that I got before the Lunchbox, but it's too loud, so it's in the garage. It comes inside when it gets too hot outside, which summer's coming along and it's gonna come back in. So today, I just wanna to talk to you real quick about um, dive bombing with a tremolo and I highly advise have fun with your tremolos if you have the double locking trem and you'll know if you have a double locking trem because you have these allen you have those allen uh, screws in the back or bolts right in there and an allen wrench will fit in there and then you have the locks up here in the nut so those locks combined with this these locks down here they lock the string in down here. You have to cut the string off at the end and put the clean end here. And then sometimes what I do, and you can see it here, is I'll just put the ball in through the other side. And there's just there's a way to do it. You just kind of measure each string out to about right here. So the length of that string goes to about right here. Once you put it in to on the, in through the headstock, and it's just kind of holding on by the ball end, straighten it all the way out, get yourself some slack to about maybe close to an inch, and then clip the string there, and then unlock the back of the bolt, and then this little, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a block in there that starts to move back, and then you can part, put, start putting your strings in there, and then you just lock it up here, tune it up, and after you do that for all six strings, you get pretty close to the tuning you want, stretch your strings out, go through the whole thing, and then lock it down here. So you'll lock it there. So what I, what I wanted to talk to you about was the, the dive bombing. And you only really wanna do dive bombing after you've set up your guitar properly. Because if you don't, it's not gonna stay in tune. It's gonna keep going out of whack on you, and you're not gonna have fun dive bombing. So yeah, you gotta start off with setting up properly for sure. So here's, here's how I like to dive bomb. I'll, uh, again, I'm a big Eddie Van Halen fan, so I'll take like the B string and go. And that's it. It's really easy to do. And then you can do it on your G string. And again, because of the kinds of pickups that we have here, and because I have the overdrive or the gain channel on, it's able to sustain that. And it's just an amazing feeling to have when you can do stuff like that. That's why I started playing guitar when I was a little kid. Um, so you do that for all your strings and just practicing, practice how that sounds. <laughs> You might be asking, well, can I do that with a non-locking trim? The answer is yes and no. It just depends on what you have. So what I would recommend is you get, um, there's a real specific um, lubricant that you can buy for your guitar. And I was looking for it, but I don't have it here. It's put away, I'm sure. Um, but it's a Diodario lubricant. Or you can get something else that's called nut sauce. And basically all it is is something that looks like Vaseline. And what you would do is you'd put the, the grease inside the, the nut where the strings go so that the strings can glide through. The, the problem with not greasing the nut is that the strings can bind and get stuck. And especially the lower strings. They'll bind. They'll get stuck. Um, another thing you might want to do with your trims is put a little bit of that that grease or nut sauce here where the the bridge pivots on the pivot bolts 
those bolts are hard driven into the wood of the, the body of the guitar. So that's what allows that pivoting to happen. And of course, what brings it back is the springs, okay? So there's, there's, it has a lot to do, staying in tune when you do all that stuff has a lot to do with how you're set up. Now you really, I, I like setting these guitars up flat against the body, but for a long time I had this one floating, so it was kind of up away from the body a little bit. And I tend to do that with my strats, and I tend to do, well the Guthrie Govin, you don't have really a choice other than it has tremolo no in the back, which I use sometimes, but it floats. So it's really nice for just ambient type sounds with delays and reverbs. It, it has this really floaty uh, ethereal effect. And I used to do that with this guitar, but then uh, I found that it just, to me, it just, it, you know, Eddie Van Halen wants the, the bridge sitting on the, on the body of the guitar, gives it better sustain, gives it better tone, all that kind of thing. Um, and I think it does a little. But I think the biggest thing is having the, the bridge against the body just gives it a better feel overall. The way it feels in the hand, and especially in the left hand when you hold the note. It just, to me, just rings a little bit better. So, so dive bomb. And then learn how to dive bomb. So you, you can dive bomb open strings, right? And so one of the first things I was I was doing is probably busting a lot of strings, but I was doing this kind of thing. I was just te basically testing the limits of the guitar. That's all I would do a lot of. Um, after you kind of get through doing all that, practice dive bombing while fretting the note. So I'm fretting the seventh fret of G string. So that's your D, um, or you can just fret anything. I'm just, I think it's a little bit easier for me to, to play here so that you can see, but you can fret anywhere here. And then try bending the string and do that there too. And it sounds like you've got this really cool effect. It's just a fun thing to do. Uh, you can do that with your harmonics, which I showed you in the last video. So I lightly touched 5th fret of the G string. So you get this kind of a siren sound there. And that's a lot of fun. It annoys the heck out of, you know, mom and dad, or mostly mom, right? But, you know, that's what pays the bills for a lot of these rock and rollers. The fact that they can do these 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 uh, tricks, it's kind of like stunts on a skateboard or something. You know, you, you're going to make a little bit more uh, money because you're going to attract more attention because you can do those sorts of things. So practice your harmonics and include the use of that fret, the, sorry, the tremolo bar. All right? And the way I grab the tremolo bar is with my middle, third, pinky finger, or ring finger and pinky finger, and I just kind of guide it. Try to hold on to it as best you can and guide it while you while you pick with the right hand and you're fretting in the left hand and you're maybe even bending. And then uh, in another video I've shown you how to artificially or pinch your harmonics. So you pinch it here in the right hand so you can bend that and bend down with the tremolo, tremolo bar. Again, the horse neigh thing. It's the kind of thing that Eddie Van Halen would do, right? Uh, Steve I does it. Uh, Joe Satriani does it. Um, a lot of those shred masters would do that kind of thing. Um, so have fun with your harmonics. Have fun with your pinch harmonics. Have fun with your tremolo bar now. Have fun bending those notes. Okay? But most of all, have fun with your guitar. We'll see you soon. Bye.